day today. It's going about one o'clock in the Arvo, guys. I'm a bit late I'm trying to get motivated, but anyway. Uh, nice day today, guys. Only about 23, 25 degrees Celsius, so it's perfect for working. So anyway, guys, I'm just going to start potting these up today. These are uh, uh, succulents and so forth that I rescued from a rubbish dump. Um, so I'm putting, putting them in here. I've got some cocoa mulch here that I've had soaking for a few days. So we're going to pot them in these pots here. This plant here, guys, as I mentioned in my last video, is the same species as this one. So once again, DJ, if you watch this, mate, does this flower, if you know about this one, mate, does this one actually flower? I've had it for a few years in my yard, probably about five years, and I've never seen it flower. So unsure. So, also guys, so what I'm doing today is doing some raking up, raking up some leaves in this beautiful, my peace tree, a Port Jackson uh, fig tree. I call it a peace tree because it's so beautiful and peaceful and so cooling on hot summer days. Uh, so I'm just raking up leaves that have fallen off the fig tree and putting them in here, making a, this is going to be one of my mushroom gardens hopefully it'll all work out for me guys grow some nice edible mushrooms also just put this big container here this used to be one of my tadpole ponds guys but I got sick of it because I was always filling it with leaves so I'm reusing it for the time being for another mulch area so I'm doing heaps of mulching guys it's beautiful I love it raking up the beautiful leaves and eventually they'll turn into nice leaf mulch so just head over here my bat boxes are up there i made them a few days ago they're looking awesome just found a, a bag of potting mix guys buried underneath some leaves so i'm going to put that on my um another mulching area this is going to be part of my organic garden as i previously mentioned guys these plants these tomato plants potato plants and broccoli plants this is a cabbage moth that one is they, you can see all the damage they do. Uh, so I've got potatoes growing here, some tomatoes, but I didn't plant these. Well, I did actually, but it's from my food scraps. So I recycle all my food scraps, guys, tea bags. Usually I rip them open. When I'm lazy, I don't. But yeah, so I've got a beautiful mulch garden here. And I've just created another one here, guys. Raking up some more leaves. So this is another mulching area more leaves and sticks and twigs and so forth so I've covered it up you know it's completely soaked that with water towards the end of the day and that way it can decompose and reduce down also going to hang up these CD discs today guys on my apricot tree I, oh look at Scrapper here having a sleep hello Scrapper hello having a nice sleep in the shade He's a nice magpie, but he's a bit vicious, guys. <laughs> he doesn't like the dogs going near him. Just really worried that he's gonna poke their eyes out. So this is my apricot tree, guys. This, these are nearly, nearly ripe. I found one before it was just about ripe. They're getting soft. You can see here the birds have been eating them. And bugs. Little earwigs, they're called. Uh, so yeah, gonna have thousands of apricots, guys. This is the most I've ever, ever seen my apricot tree. I know what it's from too, guys. From recycling my own urine, we in a bucket, and then I pour all my urine on my fruit trees. Sounds gross, guys, but trust me, it works. So you can see right here, we're a parrot. 28 parrots been and completely eaten the apricot away. All what's left is the seed. So yeah, my neighbours are going to get some nice fruit, guys. This one's soft. It's another week or so, I reckon. Look at that. Look at that, guys. There's an earwig in there. That's the worst thing. It's a little earwig. But you can still eat it. Just give it a wash. But yeah, it's going to be a bit sour at the moment. So yeah, guys, I'm going organic, as a lot of you guys know. So. Now that things are working out for me, I've finally got the time to do a lot of stuff and finally tidy up my house and the garden and make some beautiful new tadpole ponds and also got to get motivated and plant these seeds today, guys, hopefully. Some nice, beautiful 
wildflower seeds or oh, probably about 50 different species of wildflower seeds in there maybe more and also fungi spores and mushroom spores and so forth so this compost bin here guys is sitting right on top of a, another tadpole pond I've got one two three four five six probably about six or seven frog and tadpole ponds in my garden guys I don't have fish I hate fish as I said before people buy these fish from all these aquariums and then they go and get sick of them or they've got to move house and they dispose of the fish in beautiful rivers farm dams lakes and it just completely destroys the environment it's a town down the south coast we'll be visiting next year called Margaret River and all of their rivers have been completely wiped out guys due to goldfish and heaps of other fish from people tossing them into the Margaret River. It's a disgrace. So I'm also going to put some of these planks of wood in this guys because obviously when I'm picking up leaf mulch like this I'm going to be picking up little geckos, lizards, probably spiders. I'm not worried about the spiders but mainly the geckos and so forth. So just so they've got an escape route so they can get out because otherwise I'll end up staying in there and end up dying. So just a, a little escape room. Just like that guys. Same, I do the same with my tadpole ponds for frogs to get out because some frogs will fall in and they're not actually water frogs. They'll be burrowing frogs and they'll end up drowning and lizards and uh, reptiles and so forth. So always make an escape route. So all the good little creepy crawlies can get out just got a little bit of a electrical cord here guys so I'm just tying this tree to this star picket it keeps on falling over here so just to try and train it to go straight This tree here fellas is a beautiful species of bottle brush so before there was a tree leaning on it or what I've just pruned and it's pushed all the tree forward so I'm just going to stand it up like this with a star picket so this is what we call in Australia star picket I'm unsure what they call these in the UK or America, Europe etc but we call them star pickets really good these are guys these are worth about seven bucks each and I find so many of these at the rubbish dumps it's amazing so I save a fortune finding these and I scrap a lot of these as well so I'm just going to hammer it down guys and try not to break the branch break the tree Here are the beautiful bees and the birds. Love it, guys. So nice to have a nice garden full of beautiful birds and bees and insects and everything else. Frogs and tadpoles. It's 
worst thing about having dreadlocks, guys, getting your hair caught in twigs and into the day, guys, my hair's full of seeds and leaves and branches. Now I'll just tie some electrical cord guys just to make sure it stays there. That's it, now I'll just prune it. Roses, guys, paint the butt. bit so far fellas it's a, a say for you at least I reckon 10 maybe 5 to 10 trailer loads it's definitely going to be at least 10 by the time I finish pruning anyway guys I just thought I'd tell a little bit story about this so this is tea tree guys this is the stuff they make the tea tree oil out of and also this is famous for back in the early pioneer days guys this is how the early pioneers would uh, build their shelters and so forth their old sheds and uh, even their old homes when they first settled in uh, southern west Australia, possibly over east as well. And they beautiful, beautiful, create a beautiful, beautiful shady uh, structure and so much more. So I'll show you photos of what the beautiful old tea tree buildings used to look like. They also used to probably use them for fences as well, but mainly old sheds, houses and shelters. And obviously the Noongar Aboriginal people would also use the tea tree oil or tea tree uh, not just for bush medicines and so forth but also for shelters and so forth so here's some photos of what the old sheds and so forth used to look like over a hundred years ago guys So I made a video not too long ago guys about rescuing some wasp grubs. So this will be the species of wasp what laid those beautiful grubs. So it's just sitting in my tadpole pond getting some water and it's probably building a nest. But these are absolutely agonizing it bitten by one of these guys. People have actually died from them too. They're allergic to them. It's not a pleasant feeling getting bitten by one of these beautiful wasps. It's either a wasp or a species of hornet. Well, I picked up that composting box there, uh, or that old wooden machinery box there yesterday, guys. So, once again, I'm going to use it for a compost box for winter. So, it'll come in handy, guys. All these should be all nice and compacted. 
composted by winter another six months. I'll use it for growing veggies. Alright fellas, so I've got a couple of ponds over there, but I just thought this beautiful old copper insert would make a perfect pond, so I'm going to dig this area right here and make a beautiful frog and tadpole pond, guys. Another one. So we'll probably put it right there in that hole there, I reckon. Hopefully it'll fit perfectly. Hopefully it won't be too hard to dig. Or hard. Fellas, so that water's soaked in now, so we'll just use my crowbar and look out, Sophie. As you can see, it's like concrete. Get in there, fellas, get in there. How deep is it? Oh, nearly there guys, nearly there. Looks good. A bit more. God, I think that's just about it guys. So now what we'll do guys is fill in the edges. So we'll finish this off tomorrow guys, just so you know, this is how people, the illegal reptile smugglers, make their traps to catch bobtail lizards, snakes, uh, endangered marsupials, frogs, all different types of animals guys, and they'll smuggle them overseas in their pockets through postal tubes and that kind of stuff, so it's really, really sad. I've 
actually come across a patch of bush just near Dombiong with a heap of buckets. I didn't really, it's quite a while ago, I didn't know what they were. When I first saw, saw them, I thought people were growing marijuana. But anyway, I went back about probably six months later and they were gone. But they were actually used for reptile smugglers, really, really popular amongst uh, Asian people guys and uh, Eastern European people will come over to Australia and set up traps. They'll catch, capture all their reptiles and then they'll um, smuggle them overseas, so like I say, in their pockets, in their luggage, or they'll send them via Australia Post in postal tubes and so forth. It's disgusting, guys. Like those bobtail lizards, what I do videos on all the time, one of those bobtails, there's thousands of them around, million, probably hundreds of thousands. Anyone can pick them up, they're so tame and, you know, but one of those bobtail lizards will sell on the black market for about 4,000 US dollars, guys. So it's, yeah, so it's pretty sad. And this is exactly how they make their traps, just like this. So, so I'm not going to fill this off water, guys. We'll finish this off tomorrow. I'm buggered. It's been a long day. But anyway, be interesting to see what actually falls in. Look, just seen, guys, a bush cockroach. So even one of these guys, even a bush cockroach, guys, will sell sell for like bloody probably even 20 30 50 dollars who knows so hopefully you can see that guys so that is a bush cockroach and very collectible guys that's what i mean they'll these smugglers will capture anything to make money so it's a beautiful species of bush cockroach so anyway, I'll let him go guys, he's gone. So anyway fellas, like I say, I'll fill this up with water tomorrow, finish it off with some nice rocks and might put a nice water plant in there. But just out of curiosity, it'd be interesting to see if anything actually falls in that just overnight. You know, like a mouse, lizards, insects, etc. So stay tuned for the next video guys, you might see something that we accidentally catch in this big buried copper water drum. Right now guys I'm just topping up my uh, bird feeding area where the birds can have a drink and a bit of a feed for my scraps. Kiwi fruit, banana peels and little bits of fruit, pieces of fruit, carrot skin, that kind of stuff. And they come here and have a drink. Yeah, I've got a few nice little cactus plants growing here. I'm trying to learn how to grow cactus, even though it's pretty pretty easy, but give them a water. And now just watering this mulch area. So just watering this mulch area now fellas, just so I can get it all nice and moist and steamy and hot. And this is the area where I'm going to be growing mushrooms, one of the areas, I've got a few areas around. Top up, a, top up one of my tadpole ponds. So this here is made out of an old concrete sink. I've got a few of these around before. Oops, my hose is keep trying to get it all nice and damp and that way during the really hot days in summer it all steam and decompose and mulch away and be beautiful leaf mulch for growing my organic veggies, mushrooms and so forth. The little mushroom area guys once again covered in heaps of hay leaf mulch horse manure so hopefully i'll be able to grow some nice edible mushrooms and i'm also planning on over this area too some nice mushrooms i don't know guys i'm just taking one sip at a time see how i go crushing down this compost fellas
And also guys, so these are really good things to protect your socks from getting weeds and dirt in your shoes. So I forget what they're called, but I'll put the link below for on how to get them and where to get them. They're basically called sock protectors. So they stop the weeds, prickles and so forth getting into your socks and your shoes. kitchen sink just is right there on the middle of the screen guys and I've got another one here down there that one's been empty for quite some time and right here is a really big pond but it doesn't really have any tadpoles in it guys because it's always under the shade but I just keep it topped up anyway because frogs still go in there and they might breed they there has been plenty of tadpoles breeding breeding there but it's just been a bit neglected And it's also in the shade, so the tadpoles don't really like shade, shady areas. Right up, guys. It's about three quarters full. I like to have it full all the time. Got a slight leak in this pond, probably from the tree roots from this big, massive Port Jackson fig tree, pushing up the concrete on the bottom of the pond, I think. But it's only a really tiny leak. So, so just gone five o'clock in the afternoon, fellas. So. Got a couple more little jobs to do. I'm going to hang up these CDs. Pretty easy, fellas. Mainly the shiny ones. Take the mirror image, guys. So I've just tied a heap of electrical cord to the CD disc. When the when the wind blows, it all you know. You can just imagine it all glittering in the sun and so forth. G'day, fellas. Well, I've just hung up these CD discs, guys. There's about buddy 50 in this apricot tree. There's about a thousand apricots. But anyway. Look at this guys, this one's ripe. This one is ripe. Is there going to be anything in there? I don't think so. Oh, look at that fellas. One of the beautiful big feet apricots, like I say. To have a taste, eh? Have a taste. Mmm. Beautiful. Mmm, yum. Another one, guys. That is absolutely delicious, guys. I'm going to have to give my neighbour Chris a bucket full. I have 100 buckets of apricots, I reckon. So, most of them are nearly ready, guys, and just feel them nice and soft. Apric parrots. It tastes beautiful, fellas. Nothing like your home grown fruits, veggies, and so forth. Oh, look at that. Look at all the beautiful apricot juice, juice fellas. Delicious. Right, we'll keep going fellas, there's a couple more things I need to do, one more thing for the end of the day. This here. It's a beautiful tree coming up, and they go really, really quick guys, less than a year. It'll be about the size of this tree here, this is exactly the same species. So these just, I didn't plant these trees here, they just started growing, probably from a bird dropping. And they just drop their seeds, birds eat the seeds and they do their droppings around the yard and they just pop up. It's an absolutely beautiful tree guys, it doesn't look the best now.
guys, so we're going to dig it up. So hopefully it's not <coughs> root bound. It shouldn't be. No. Ooh. Just be very careful, guys. There it is there. There's a root there. So I'll dig a bit, the hole a bit dig deeper. Be very careful, guys. There it goes. So that's that there, guys. In less than a year, that will be about probably 10 foot tall and a beautiful big tree like that one, what I just showed you. So we'll go and pot this, guys. Hopefully, it'll survive. I think it will. All right, fellas. So I just potted it. So I'll keep it for a couple of days and just see if it survives. I'll take care of it and then I'll give it to Chris with a bucket of nice apricots. I'm just getting some nice apricots for Chris, guys. Just the right ones. Just slowly or slightly squeeze them and you can just feel that they're ripe. Right, we've got half a bucket, guys. This, that's all I could find, what they were ripe. So we're going to give them to Chris and we'll finish off this tomorrow. So stay tuned. Nah, nah. Okay, thanks, mate. Alright, fellas, I'm just recycling some of my dishwater from my sink onto my potato patch. I've also got some tomato seeds in here as well. What's that, Cindy? Alright guys, last job of the day. So this is just my scrap bucket. Uh, tea bags and a bit of scrap was gone off. I'm going to put into my compost area. So there's tea bags, potato skins, lemons and so forth. So that's it guys, so I really really appreciate you watching, hope you enjoyed the video, it's been a good day today, I kicked some good goals and did heaps of pruning and so much more guys, so stay tuned for the next episode, see you fellas. I'm just going to put it on my mushroom garden, guys. This is where I'm going to be growing mushrooms. Just try and make, make the compost all nice and moist and so forth. <laughs>